Right, so hey guys and welcome to the part 4 of creating a backdoor program using Python. This tutorial is really where it's going to get interesting because this time we're going to learn how to actually um, download remote files from the target computer using our server and slave program. So before we start this tutorial, what you want to do is create a new folder destination just so that we can test this to, um, file. What you want to do is call this, um, let's say, example slave destination. Let's assume this is the the slave program is actually running on a target computer for now, and this is the directory that it is in. And let's just create some sample files here, like this word file. Let's call it um, test. And we can just open this file and type in um, this is um, important file. Okay, so we now have a file named as test.docs, and then we've um, put this and the slave program in the example slave destination, which could be the computer where the slave file is running. So now what we want to do is edit the server and the slave file and add our code in to download our custom files. So first of all, let's get them side by side. What you want to do is, um, let's see the command that we're going to use to download the file. So the command we're going to use to download files is going to be, um, let's just say download files. Well, download files from directory right so what you want to do next is go ahead and register this command how we're going to do this is just copy this elif statement right here and then we're just going to paste it below that and this one is going to be called obviously download file which we just decided upon a second ago and first of all what we're going to do is obviously we're sending the command over to the slave program so in order for it to be recognized here, we need to also copy this and paste it once again. So the command is actually recognized in the slave program, or obviously it's not going to work. So we just do download files, right? And then file, and then we can move on to asking the user for the file he wants to download. So the file he wants to download, what we do with that is we can type in um, file name equals input string. Um, please enter the file link. By that I mean the file path. Let's just change that to the file path, including the file name. Right. So once we have the file path and the file name of the file that we're trying to download from the slave program, so bear in mind you're obviously going to have to do the custom directory first and learn how the C drive in the slave program is worked out and how the directories and stuff are. Then you can use that um, custom directory link and copy that and paste that here so that you can actually find the file you're looking for. And then once we have the file name, what we're going to do is we're going to send that file name over. Let's just rename this to file path because it's really annoying me. File path. Okay, so we're going to send that over to our slave program. We do connection.send file path.encode. And then we can print. Um, let's not print anything for now. So once we go here, what we're going to do is we're going to change this to. I'm going to call this file path equals um, s.receive. Let's just do 5000 for now. And then we do file path equals file path.decode so that we have uh, no unnecessary data in there. We only need the ones that we need. So first of all, what we need to do is we run an open command. So we do open, I mean, file equals open. And then what we are opening is going to be obviously the file path underscore path. We're opening that. 
and we're opening in the read read mode uh, there should be something else as well so we're opening in the read bytes mode so what we're saying here is we're opening the file which is specified from the server which we've sent over we're opening that and we're opening in the read bytes mode when we're writing the files we will write it as the read bytes for now we're only reading it so we're once we've done that we're going to overwrite the file well actually we'll just say data equals file.read and then once the data has been read we're going to send that data over to our uh, what's it called uh, master program or the server program so we do s.send data.encode and that does that for now so once the data has been sent over we're just going to print here um, file has been sent successfully right so once we're done with that we just print a blank one again and again around here just so that it's nice and neat and what we want to do here is go on and uh, receive the file so we do file equals connection dot receive let's just do 10,000 for now okay so once we're done with that we can do we don't need to decode this so all we need to do is file new file equals open and for this we're going to need a file name so we need to store a file name create a new variable called file name and we're going to ask the user what he wants to save this file as please enter a file name for the incoming file including the extension we can obviously automate this but I want to keep this tutorial short so it doesn't get boring for you guys so once we're done with the file name we're going to do um, new file equals open the file name into write bytes mode and then we're going to do new file dot write sorry oops new file dot write we're going to get the data we just received which is file up here which we just received and then once we're done writing we're just going to close the new file new file dot close and we can say print um, file name space has been downloaded downloaded and saved and we can end it right there let's just do another print right here just to keep it neat and tidy I do think I'm missing one step so there might be just one slight error which we can quickly solve but for now I'm just gonna run this program to check if it can work uh, does not match indentation level okay no okay. servers running on one side and so is it on the other so we're just gonna get the address for the server copy and paste that obviously if you guys haven't watched the previous tutorials there's already three versions of this video before part one part two part three and this is part four so I really do recommend you guys to go and watch from part one to part three and then carry on with this one because it will make a lot more sense obviously if you guys aren't interested in those ones you can just carry on with this one so uh, the command we created was download file and then it's asking us for the file path including the file name for now it's called um, test.docs so we need to type in that test.docs click enter uh, objects no attribute to encode okay I just forgot that we didn't have to encode the data because it is obviously already encoded before I actually run this again I just want to make a few changes here because it doesn't look very nice this has nothing to do with the functioning of the program program just want it to look a bit more better right so we run this again might have another slight error but we're prepared for that um, let's copy this and then paste it right here and then we can do the command which is download file 
and then the file name is test dot docs. File has been sent successfully. Please enter a file name for the incoming file, including the extension. So we're going to call this. Oops, am I not typing? Yeah, I was. My bad. So received file dot docs. Make sure that the extension is same. And then once we hit enter, receive file dot docs has been downloaded and saved. Now we're going to see how true this actually is by closing this down. We close this one down as well. We just minimize both of these. We go to our directory. And if we go to one one back, as we see right here, next to the server file, we've just successfully downloaded our received file.docs. We're going to open this up to see if all data is in there. And there we are. It says this is some important file. Now we essentially have two copies um, because one was residing on the target machine, which we're going to get the slave program running on. And we've used our programming to download that file from the slave program to the server. So that's how we did. We need to continue the rest of the programming as well. But for today, that was it. Hope you guys found this interesting. I myself did. Um, uh, before we continue, I really want to thank you guys for all the subscriptions so far and all the unbelievable support. Um, please make sure to help me reach my target 1000 subscribers by subscribing. Um, I'm really grateful to all you guys that have already subscribed and I will be releasing the part 5 of this tutorial soon where we will be learning how to remove files remotely and maybe remove directories at the same time as well. With all, and next after those we're just going to keep following this. Anyway that was it for today's tutorial guys. I hope you liked this. Please make sure to drop a like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.